Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, we are going to do another GIMP tutorial today, and somebody asked me to cover some things about paths, and so this is for you. Uh, this is not a completely, thoroughly, and totally comprehensive uh, uh, review here on paths, but uh, mostly more of an introduction will get you moving on, in on things and understanding them. So, first you need to understand that a path is a essentially like a vector uh, type system and re realize that GIMP is primarily a raster image editing software. And that's important to keep in mind because if you're going to be dealing exclusively with paths and you're going to be just doing tons and tons and tons of path things, go use Inkscape because Inkscape is a vector editing software. It has a whole lot more you can do. However, uh, be it GIMP or be it uh, Photoshop and probably Krita, but I haven't examined paths in Krita, um, you have the ability to manage your paths and they do make fabulous additions to a lot of your graphic design projects. If I think back to this book cover I just did, I don't believe I used any of them. There's, there's not a lot of reasons I use a ton of paths, but we're going to go ahead and talk about how to do those uh, today. And so what we're going to do is... First, I'll move on over to my uh, screen here. Now, the first thing we want to keep in mind is in our considering our setup, there is a panel up here for paths. And so you might want to go ahead and put that on your uh, on your system here if you don't already have it. So just kind of grab the uh, grab the little arrow up here and hit add a tab and then you come down and find paths. You're probably going to want that and it looks like uh, this guy over here with a lot of uh, curvy lines, some straight lines and all that and that'll make more sense to you. Of course your path tool is on your toolbar, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, looks like the 8th tool. Uh, so you see it says paths and the hotkey is the B. And so you can design, you can move, you can edit. And then you can see here uh, under your tool options, I like locking my tool option underneath my tool panel here because it'll give me uh, more details. So if I hold my control, I can edit a given path. If I do uh, alt, I can move a given path. And actually it's not listed here, but shift will allow you to combine paths together. So I'll uh, walk you through all those. So first let's go ahead and open up the, uh, open up the, the photo we are always working on and that is of the two cute little kitties. We're going to go ahead and grab this guy here. Now t we're going to start with our path tool. So basically what a path will do is it will allow you to put on some points and it will attach lines. And then you can draw across those lines, you can fill those lines, you can stroke those lines. There's just so many different things that you can do. So just start first by left clicking and then that'll simply add a point and then put somewhere where you want the next point to go and you'll see that you have a line there. Now what we want to do though is if I'm going to hold control here so I can edit this guy, whoop, uh, there's a, let me, uh, I'm going to go ahead and just start from the beginning again. And as I explain this out, um, it'll be, it'll be a, a few back and forths here. So. Um, if you can see if you hold the mouse button, you get this bar going out. This will actually tell you the degree of curvature that you have. So if I start out with some curvature, click another line, and then now you can see when I add, drag and drop this around, I can have some, some various curvature. So then we can go ahead and do things like this, uh, however you want the curvature to be. Now, if you uh, grab an individual, um, if you grab one of these individual uh, paths here, path points, then what you can do is you can grab these guys and drag them independently of each other. So you can see the default is it's going to push each of the, these guys out uh, the equal amount, but you can come back in behind yourself and and attach them exactly the way you want. You can push them out at different angles. You'll see what that does is that causes your line to do some different curvatures there. Okay. And so I can go ahead and do this, but if I hold, like I said, if I go ahead and uh, hold one of these on and is it shift? Nope. It is, it is control allows me to join a given point. So if I highlight another point and I hold control, I can join these points together. Now, if you want to get rid of a point, highlight it and push not the delete key, the backspace key. That will delete one of the paths along the line. Of course, uh, let me see. I should be able to add a, I should be able to add one if I come in and let's see. Uh, maybe I can't add, maybe I can't add paths in. 
trying to see if I can get get a path at it, add another path that's not in here. I'm pretty sure I can. I just got to remember how how to do that. Okay, that's going to be something I, I have to research uh, another time to see how I can add another uh, another path into a... Oh, that's what happens if you push delete. <laughs> I'm just seeing if I can grab anything else. Okay, so what purpose, now that we have our path, let's just go ahead and talk about some of the things that you can do. You see how you have your path and you can come up here and you can give it a name. Now you can hide it or show it. Of course, it's gonna be shown because we're on our path tools. Um, but if I come over here and, uh, and I come off my path tools and I click on my hide button, then you will see that the path will not be there. Uh, I can click the view so you can see the path. Of course, if I come down here and uh, click on the the path tool again, it will not highlight itself unless I click on the path. So now uh, I can make edits, I can make adjustments, I can move individual points around. Now, what purpose do paths have? Well, you can do a lot better selection things with paths than you can with using your selection tool. So I'm gonna go ahead and just hide this one. Um, and we're going to go ahead and start a new path. Um, let me see here. Let me just kind of jump off of that. Let's just go ahead and create a new one. And what we'll do is, uh, it might take some time, but let's go ahead and highlight the kitty. So what I'm actually going to do is, rather than mess with any of the drag points, I'm just going to come around and just kind of click a... Uh, click a path point across the cat coming across. You'll see that it is adding a new path. It's going to be doing a, uh, uh, a different one than uh, the original one I had on there. Um, and then you can see I can easily drag this guy around. So selection in GIMP is actually works a lot more streamlined than it does in Photoshop even. Um, because on that, I don't have as much control to edit an individual um, an individual selection point. But for this guy here, we're gonna come over here and just gonna keep editing the kitty. And the kitty's now looking at me over here. He's hanging out in his location. Okay, and then now I'm going to hold my control and combine this together so this is now one path. Now what we might want to do is just grab our, grab each individual lines, add just a little bit of curvature to it just so that I can grab. Um, holding your control button down will allow you to grab the very specific, uh, very specifically the bars so that you're not accidentally moving the... Uh, I don't want to accidentally move the cat around a little bit, but you see that what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this. Maybe this one I might want to put down closer to this, move this guy down a little. So you can see here with what I'm doing is I'm just kind of making, making some fine adjustments to add some curvature to it, which is going to give me the ability to uh, kind of really add much more curvature than you could possibly get by adding um, uh, by adding your uh, I'm actually going to delete this one I don't need that extra one in there Okay, so you can see kind of what I'm doing. I'm not going to go ahead and smooth out the whole thing. But now that we have our path selected of our little cat, I can come up here, just rename this guy cat. So now I can grab various different selections here. Now what you can do with these is you can actually convert a path to a selection. So now I have that selected. So if I can come over to any other tool, I can see that the cat is now completely selected. So I can cut it out or paste it out, whatever else I might want to do. But this is another way that we can actually really kind of keep selections out of the way. In fact, you might even be able to add a selection directly to a path. I don't know. Let's see. 
I didn't did not look into that. I'm sure it's possible. Um, but regardless, I can highlight what my various paths are. You can see that it will give me different colors of the paths so I can see which one's which. And I can come down here, I can add it to a selection. Um, I can duplicate the path to something else. Um, I can, um, let's see, selection to, a okay, there we go. So if I happen to have, there we go, let me uh, deselect everything. So if I just happen to do that and I pick a uh, selection to path, that'll give me a, a new path there. So I have a new path to work with. So yep, you can do that. And then uh, with our, I wanna go back to our cat. Um, I can also do a uh, paint along the path. So let's go ahead and look at the paint along the path section. So what this is gonna allow you to do is you can add a solid color. So if you wanna put a stroke around the cat, um, then you can come down here with your, um, with your uh, path tool there and you can see that you can actually just kind of uh, put a big stroke around it. Oop, let me undo that. Uh, let's see. So really the best way to do this is um, you can come in here with your paintbrush and then what you do need to do is make sure that you have your, your brush settings kind of set up right which you should be able to do as you're, uh, as you're working on this. Let me just uh, get something kind of crazy going here. Let's go ahead and do this. Okay, so there you go. That's uh, what happens if I just went ahead and changed it to one of my other brush styles. Uh, let me hide that so you can't see that anymore. So you can see that that's kind of what that, that does around the cat. So this allows you to move things into selections quicker. It allows you to add strokes. You can even do some content fills in there. Uh, so stuff like that. So that is really one of the powerful things with the paths is it will allow you to kind of save your selections. And if there's things that you want to maintain some selection of, you might save the paths as selections so that you can kind of keep up and, and go on to those uh, down the road. Let's also look at other things you can do. Uh, so we can stroke a line. We can also stroke a pattern. So you recall your patterns are down here in this panel. So if I want to do a pattern, maybe let's grab, yeah, let's grab this one. So you see that it will uh, do a pattern fill there around the cat using the patterns that I have. So here, if you want to do a various line style, you can make your adjustments to the styles here. And of course, if you want to completely fill in the area, there's, there might be a better way to fill in than, than what I'm thinking. But what I would generally do is just start by grabbing the, um, uh, you can either grab, uh, just grab that and then go into your, you know, make your selection. And then usually what I need to do for the best fill is I just get a really nice big, uh, big paintbrush there. And that's just the best way to fill things as far as I can find. Now the other things that you can do with paths, I'm gonna deselect everything there. Um, you can also add text to paths. So some cute cats, we'll go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and change our font. Uh, let's just, I'm just gonna find some other type of font that's not, uh, There you go. There's there's some there's some funniness to it. So now on your um, uh, let's see. Just got to remember where my uh, where my my text selection was. There we are. Um, so here you can do um, path from text or text along the path. Um, so. Text along the path, what this is going to do is it's going to align text to a variety, to a different type of path. So this is what you do to get text to kind of angle around corners. And I did not experiment with, um, with putting that together. So let me see if I can figure that out real quick here. Let me just go ahead into my paths. And so what we'll do here, grab my pathing tool. Oh, never mind. it already did it. You can see what it does there. Uh, it goes to whatever your uh, your current selected path is. Let's go ahead and uh, take this one off. I'm going to delete that path. Okay, we're going to try this again. Text along path. There it goes. 
Okay, so there was something goofy in there somewhere. So now I got the text along the path. And so what we're gonna do now that we have the path, let's go back to our paths system and then we're going to go ahead and try this again. I had a few little, uh, little issues with it. So we're gonna go ahead and try this. Okay, so what you see is it didn't, it only added what was up there on that main little guy there. So we want to get rid of that. So we're going to, though, select uh, wh where we're challenged is right now is we only have this layer selected. We're going to go back down to this guy here so we can select everything. I hold, held control A. You can see everything is selected now. And then with everything being selected, we're going to go back to our paths, come down here. We're going to do pattern, stroke, and now we'll hide that. You can see it doesn't it doesn't really quite look all that good, but what we basically did is we added a leopard skin print to that. So let's actually get rid of that because that really doesn't work well. Um, but let's try something else here. Let's look at, um, let's go ahead and stroke it with a solid color. Let's do a very small line width Ooh, here's a dash pattern we can do. Stroke that, see what that looks like. So that's actually not too bad. So now we'll come back to our layer here. Now the downside of course is that put that onto this individual layer. So maybe what we might do, let's go ahead and undo, undo that. Um, let's come up at a new layer. We're just going to go ahead and do a, a full new layer. So then now with our path, uh, select everything again. Good. So we'll come back to our paths and let's go ahead and just add that same, uh, that same line style back to it. So stroke that, get rid of this. So now we should have our text on its own layer. So we'll go ahead, grab our move and then I actually accidentally duplicated that. Oh, you know what I didn't do? I did not delete the uh, the first one off the original layer. So I did I did not uh, back up enough to delete the original off the original layer. Uh, but anyway, we can uh, create the um, create a text like that. Oh, let me grab this guy here. And so I could do something like that. So your paths allows you to do that. And now, of course, I can come back to my paths if I can even do something else to it. Maybe I want to add some more color to it. Um, so let's do that. Let's go ahead and just grab, maybe we'll grab an orange as well. Um, we get another one. Let's go ahead and... So if I could actually do that a couple different times with a few different colors... that allow me to kind of create a, a variety of different uh, a variety of different uh, systems here. So come back to my layers, see what I got where. Okay, so all those are done on that layer there. All right, so uh, that is just your brief uh, summary on paths. So you can highlight multiple things, save stuff into selections. Um, you can also scale your paths. Um, you can move my paths back over closer to my front there. See if you right click, you can create new paths, raise it, lower it, you can duplicate it, you can make selections, you can add to the paths, subtract from the paths. So there's a variety of different things that you can do in here. Um, but the paths will enable you to have a variety of different um, a variety of different different data points that you can you know go back and forth, you can add um, uh, you can add colorations, you can add strokes, you can add just a variety of different things to it. Then, of course, you can move them around. Um, make sure you're working with on layers. If you, in this case, you know, I had accidentally put the first path on that one layer, which, you know, that's a whoops. But, you know, you do that every now and again. That's why you have the undo buttons. You can kind of back up several steps back, in fact. Let me see. So that's still there. There you go. 
let me go ahead and redo that one. So you can see there that now we got this path here. So let's just go back up to our text. Let's just kind of duplicate that again. Text along path. There we go. That'll create a new path there. Um, let's go back to our main layer. We're going to hide this, uh, create a new layer. All right, working on the new layer, back to paths. And then this is where we can do a variety of different things. Let's see if there's a, a type of uh, texture that might not look too bad. Let's go with this. Let's see what that looks like. So here you can see we're kind of layering some things on top of each other. And let's go ahead and just do one more. Let's do a, uh, something like that. There you go. And now since that's on its own separate layer, I'm going to grab my move tool, hold shift and highlight that. Let's go ahead and hide that path. So that's how you can add some rounded text. Um, you can highlight your, your cat still. So I can actually come back down here. I can um, you know, select the cat. Uh, there we go, add some sparkles. Now he's a sparkly vampire kitty. So that's what your paths enable you to do. Just a variety of different, uh, variety of different uh, selection customizations. Um, you can do fine adjustments, rounded curves, uh, text to paths, uh, selections into paths. And that will actually, a selection to an, into a path will enable you to edit that, that selection when you know, kind of fine tune it. Let's just go, to, go down to our final uh, image. Let's go ahead and um, let's see. Zealous crop's gonna do. Nope, that just did what <laughs> did something goofy. All right, um, so that is that. Um, come on back for more um, more tutorials here with GIMP. Uh, let me know in the comments if there's anything else that you would like to see, and I will cover that. Um, if you want to see if you're the person asked for path information and there's more you were specifically looking for, let me know. That's a pretty good primer as to what you can do with the paths. A um, little bit of little bit of oopsies in there, but yeah, that's okay. That happens with image editing. Um, so uh, if you do like what we're doing here, you can check out the uh, page at switchtolinux.com forward slash support. You can learn how to support the channel. Uh, as of right now, we have Patreon, PayPal, and Amazon you can help support us with. So thanks for watching, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.